Hey guys, we're out at the Whippet shop here. We're just building posts for this building. And uh, so I'm just gonna go through how we do that. These are gonna be three ply posts. They're gonna be three ply two by eights. So when we're doing these two by eight posts, like we're gonna be building quite a few of these. You know, we've got 20, I wanna say 24 of these posts going together. So what I did, they're all gonna be the same nailing pattern. And they have like an alternating nailing pattern, kind of as spec by the engineer. So I just took a 16 foot two by four and I laid out where all the nails were gonna go on each side. So then I can just take this, line them up, and now I can just follow the marks that I put on there um, to know exactly where I gotta, where I have to put nails without having to measure out on every single one. Whenever we're nailing these posts together or laminating beams, anytime that we're, um, that we're plying stuff together, what you like to do is flush up at one end, and you put a nail there, kind of move down to the center of the, uh, the post or the beam, make sure it's flush on the edge here. And then you can move right down to the end, get that nice and flush. Otherwise, if you just nailed it, if one of these boards had kind of a crown to it, then you know, we, we'd be nailing it and, and they wouldn't be lined up together. So this I'll just work my way down, make sure it's flush on the edge the whole way. And then once it's tacked like that, I can go ahead and nail the whole thing up. Just like that. So now, now that I got this side all nailed up, these two plies are, like, are nailed together. Then I can just go ahead, flip this guy over. That way when I nail on my third ply, you can see the nails from this side and you'll be able to see the nails from this side. So when an inspector or the engineer looks at that, they'll know that, it's, that they can see the nails and they can see that nailing pattern. And you wanna make sure you do that even if you're not gonna be able to see both sides of it. It just makes sure that you have, the nails are going through each ply into the plies in the center. And see we already got the post plied together, got them cut to height, and then we've also cut in the beam notch. So what we're doing now is we're getting ready to put the wall girts on this wall. So the first thing we want to do before we go and lay out where there's where those are gonna go, we want to lay all the posts in their brackets like you see here. And then what we want to do is we actually want to just string the bottom of the posts, get them all exactly in line. Another important thing at this step is to make sure that all your saddles are at the same height. What I did is put a block here on the bottom of the post and then the same thing at the other end. And then we run a string from block to block. Now I'll just work my way down and set the bottom of these posts at exactly inch and a half and then they'll all be in, in line with each other. Once the base of the post is in the bracket or in the saddle, then we blocked up the other end so that they'll sit nice and level. You don't really have to do that. They, they could be built kind of leaning down a little bit, but this will just make it really nice because we're actually gonna frame the roof on top of the foundation with the walls still lying here. So having them level is gonna make a nice working area for us. There we got the bottom of these all straightened up and we're ready to go ahead and lay out and we'll snap lines for our wall girts. Okay, so we got the bottom of these all straightened up. Now I'm just gonna go to the corner post and I'm gonna lay out where our wall girts are gonna go. We always mark these. We mark it so that you'll put the strap with the top of the strap lined up with the mark that we're making here. That way when you're, you know, if you're doing this standing up or whatever, then you would, uh, you would just hold the board up to it and not have to be peering underneath to see where your mark was at. And these wall girts are all going on on two foot centers. And we'll do the same thing with our wall girts on the interior, as well as our roof purlins on the roof. So that one's marked out. And I'll head down to the other corner and do the same thing and then snap across those and we can start putting on our wall girts. So we got both these walls framed up. We're just making this platform to frame the roof. So we're gonna frame this roof right here. Once it's got all the purlins on and all braced up and then we'll even put the wall or the roof metal onto it. 
And then when, when we get the crane here, we'll lift that off, set it off to the side in the lawn, use the crane to stand up those walls, brace them up, and then we'll put that roof right on top all in one go. So what I got set up here is just kind of like a, a temporary platform. And we cut these two by eights and we just cut them all the same length. We'll go ahead, snap a line on one of these that we're gonna set our trusses to. And then we can do our layout, pull square to the other side, basically get, get the whole thing laid out and ready to start standing trusses. So we're just getting ready to do this layout on, uh, we're gonna snap a line on this side of our roof platform. You know, this two by eight on top, it is pretty straight, but we're just gonna, we're actually just gonna snap a line from end to end. That way we know that it, we're framing that roof absolutely deadly straight. So what I'm doing, basically just coming in half inch on this side, I'll do the same thing on the other one. We'll snap that and then use that as our master line to, to lay out that roof off of. So now that we've snapped this line, we've measured across to the other side, snapped a parallel line on the other side. So now there's a string line on each side. And then we basically just picked a point here, kind of chose just lined up with the corner of the foundation. And we've squared that. So that's where our roof is going to start. So then what we do is, from this corner, opposing corner, like on a, on a diagonal, we've got 29 foot six across and then 35 feet down. And then, so we just use the calculator there, it comes out to 45 foot nine and five sixteenths. We know that this thing's all squared up and we're not gonna fly it up and try to set it on the walls and it'll be all out of whack and not fitting. Mm -hmm. 